let's talk about borrowing power and hard and soft vouchers. Two things many people might not be familiar with if you're not in the poker community, but if you are, these things are very important for yourself and to look out for so you don't get scammed. If you have a good credit score, a bank might loan you someone else's money at a high interest rate, so they win in the deal. Or if you're a professional poker player with a long track record of being honest, reputable, paying your debts, you can get loans from poker players too. In general, never loan anybody money. Just say, I don't loan money, I don't borrow money, that's my standard, so don't get mad when I tell you I'm not gonna give you money. It's usually best to do this unless you 100% trust that your friend has collateral or they're just good for it. And it just happens to be a circumstantial thing, not an ongoing thing. An old saying is, if you wanna lose money and a friend, loan them money. People will ask for money for a few different reasons. One of them is being that they're broke, they're having some tough times, or they're just illiquid at the moment. Maybe they're fully invested in some other companies, stocks, houses, backing players. If a person has assets, that's a much more reasonable person to loan money to, especially if they're reputable. The other reason someone might need a loan is if they're in a different country, if they don't have enough of that currency, if they just happen to be on their third or fourth bullet and they didn't expect to have to keep firing in a given tournament. Dude, I need a fourth bullet, man. Give me, give me a hundred bucks. The amount of the loan could go anywhere from $20 to $20,000, depending on your circle of friends. Know who you're loaning to, and if you don't, and you're worried that they might not pay you back, you can get a vouch. A vouch is another person saying that if person A scams you and doesn't pay you back, I will be responsible for that debt. There are two types of vouches, a soft vouch and a hard vouch. A soft vouch is, yeah, he should be good for it, but if he screws you, that's on you, bro. A hard vouch is, yes, my man is gonna be good for it. I trust him 100%. If he doesn't pay you back, I will. Usually, a hard vouch will come from someone that has a much higher net worth and a much greater reputability in the poker community. As a backup plan, I highly recommend that you do a hard vouch if you're ever concerned about the ethics or the liquidity of the person that you're loaning money to. It's always a tough scenario when doing any type of trade, the moment when it's like the handoff, if you will. I'm not involved in drug deals or anything like that, but for instance, hey, you got the stuff? Yeah, I got the stuff, you got the money? Oh, I got the money, you got the stuff? Where's the money at? Oh, where's the stuff at? You've probably seen this in movies. I am Hector. I don't. So? You got the money? You got the stuff? Sure, has the stuff, but um, has it right here with me now? I got it close by. But I don't have the money either, man. I have it close by too. The trust factor is huge. And this is unique to the poker community. Many other occupations, people can hardly trust their coworker to loan them lunch money. It's a weird world that I live in, but this is reality. As a general rule, I don't loan or borrow money from anybody because it's nothing but trouble in general. But once in a while I'm in a pinch, I might need to borrow a couple hundred bucks just to reload in a cash game, or I just don't have a you know, thousand dollars in my wallet for bullet number three. I see a friend that knows I'm good for it. I get the money from him and I pay him back the next time I see him or send him PayPal, ACR, whatever. And that wraps up a little insight into the crazy world that is poker loaning and borrowing. Stay safe out there. You can always say no. Here is a pile of money that was given to me by a mutual friend to give to another friend. They're trusting me that this money gets from point A to point B. They don't know each other very well, but they both know me and they both trust me. It's a thing of convenience and a thing of trust. It's a weird world out there. Know who to trust. But in the end, as Stone Cold Steve Austin said, DTA, brother, don't trust anybody. Right. You thought I was your friend. You were the biggest pup in the world. A slight drizzle on fight night at the win. $550 buy-in, part of the spring poker classic. $100,000 guaranteed. Over $30,000 for first. One-day event. Let's get that $30,000.
There is a $1,700 circuit event going on at the Rio for the World Series of Poker, but... You know I am impartial to the win tournaments, so... $550 buy-in is probably the correct metagame choice. If you're a high-stakes pro, you're going to choose the $1,700 over the $550. Softer field, better ROI, higher chance of winning. Winning equals happiness. Let's leave happy at around 2 a.m. Hey, Ryan. All right, Jeffrey, you have a lovely day. Oh, thank you. Fifteen. Thank you. <laughs> With blinds at 500, 1,000, 1,000. We have folded and blinded down to 10,000 chips, under the gun plus one limps, middle position limps, and I'm in the cutoff with ace, king, offsuit. 10 blinds, snap jam, we're all in. Under the gun plus one jams and limper jams. What the hell is going on? Do they both trap me? Kind of. Under the gun plus one has sevens and other guy has jacks. I think we're a favorite to hit a pair, so let's flop it. Here's the video. Three-way all in. All right. Ace King looking good. There's King. Let's hold. Oh, we're holding. Up there, guy. Got what got there? Oh, you. Oh, I won. Okay. I'm good. With a 1,000 big blind ante, run to the gun plus one with pocket fours, uh, pretty good time to raise it up to 2,200. Action pulls the small blind who puts in the call and big blind comes along for the ride. We're three ways to a flop of ace, queen, 10, two hearts, one diamond. Action checks to me, but we do have pocket fours and I'm probably just gonna give up. Tired of bluffing, I'm a horrible bluffer, they always call me. The turn is the four of hearts, bingo, bango, bongo, Vince, we've turned our set. Two flush draws on the board and the small blind of Log Watcher from Vancouver. <laughs> Leads out for 5,500. Big blind folds. And we have a decision to make here. Do we just flat call and play various rivers? Or do we raise it and try to get value from all the big combo draws and two pair type hands? I decide just to flat the 5,500. We have 30K behind. Let's see what happens on the river. The river is an offsuit eight. My plan is to call if he bets 11,000 or more and to raise if he bets under that. I think a smaller bet will be more of a blocker type bet. Fours are definitely gonna be good, so we wanna go for max value, but we are scared of 16 combos of King Jack and 16 combos of Jack Nine. We have a set, but hey, it might not be good. Small chance is also slow playing a hand like aces, queens, or tens. So would he bet 7,000? I got the green light to go for it. A small raise size wouldn't make much sense here, so we gotta go for max value. Polarizer hand to value and bluffs. He goes deep into the tank after we shove all in for 30,600. He says, I got a big hand. This is when I'm like, oh shit, he's got jack nine. He says, you checked king jack on the flop? Uh, I'm really never checking king jack here on the flop, but that's just me, maybe I should. And a few more minutes go by, I'm hoping for a call, and he eventually folds and shows ace-queen offsuit. What the hell's going on? Didn't get paid. Excellent read by this gentleman. Nice. And we're on first break with 60,000 chips. Hey, what's up? Jeff Bosky on YouTube, watch him all day. <laughs> It appears that my lips are chapped. It's like a desert in here. The same guy from Vancouver just lost a huge pot the previous hand. And he opens from middle position to 4,000. Greg on my right, flat calls. We're next to act with pocket tens. I think we can do a mix between uh, calling and three betting. We don't really wanna play tens, three, four, or five ways. Let's take the initiative and give ourselves a chance to win it pre-flop or induce from worse. A lot of good things can happen by three betting tens here at this stack depth. I make it 15,000 to go. Action folds around to the viewer from Vancouver who shoves all in for 51,000. 
Is he tilted? Does he have ace king? Or does he have jacks plus? Greg on my right folds and we got him covered. We got pocket tens. We weren't bluffing. We put in the call and he shows us pocket aces. Good timing for him, bad timing for us. Let's spike a 10. Aces, 10s. Gonna need some help. Good in. For the next hour, I find some spots to shove all in that are profitable, and everybody always folds, so I guess it doesn't even matter what my cards are. And we maintain our stack anywhere from 15,000 to 30,000. I can move to a new table with 15,000 at 2,500 big blind and second hand dealt. We put, pick up pocket fours in late position, so I shove it all in. Small blind reshoves with ace queen. We're off to the races. Let's keep it low, dealer. New table, lucky hand. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, let's hold. Show him how it's done. Let's keep him low. Stop. Oh, 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 yeah. That's good. Oh, oh, oh. No, that's not oh, good. That's okay, good. that's good. Three, four. Wow. <laughs> A few hands later, we look down at King Queen offsuit and 35,000 chips. Uh, what are we looking at? 13 blinds, 14 blinds? That's fine. We can just rip it in there. That's tournament poker for you. If you don't like it, don't play it. You gotta embrace the gamble. Let's gamble. Some sort of British reg. Two to my left, puts in the call. We're heads up against Ace Nine of Hearts. We're gonna need to hit. Let's get there. Let's get him. Yeah. King Queen, baby. Oh, there's one king. King Queen. King queen. No wow. seven. Rick. Our 70,000 stack slowly dwindles. Trying to see some flops, trying to raise and take it. None of that ever works. And we can get down to about 35,000 chips. 50 year old Caucasian woman limps under the gun. She has about 16,000 at 3,000 big blind. I'm in middle position with Ace King, 35,000 chips, easy jam, unless she's specifically trapping with aces or kings. Possible, but you never know. Action folds back around to her and she puts in the call and shows Ace, Deuce, Diamonds. Let's hold. Action flop. Oh yeah, trapping good. All right. I get one shove through, we get up to 26,000, and then under the gun plus one, eight handed, I look down at ace eight off. Uh, probably a fold, but you know, shoves get more respect than they do online, in theory. Got to play to win. We got an ace blocker, we shove it in there. Nine blinds, guy on my left with some blue shark glasses, asks for a count, and puts in the call. That's bad news. Everybody else folds, and we're up against ace 10 offsuit, pretty thin. Let's get him. Boom. Ace eight, ace 10. I'm Chinese, next to the Chinese guy. A lot of eights, nines, sevens. Seven, eight, got him. Seven. Thank you one. Thank you. 26. Wait, it's 10. Oh, you hit a 10? Yeah. Oh, I thought I was. I, I actually, when you were saying that, I actually oh. thought I lost. Oh, no, no. <laughs> I was. I'm like, wait, I lost. Oh, yeah, you won. Congratulations. <laughs> okay, I'm out of here. Good luck, Dustin. It's still, it's still oh, late. Oh, I thought oh, I lost. Yeah. I'm like, oh, damn. Oh, yeah, you got me. Okay. All right, enough pain. Uh, let's get some pleasure in our lives. I'm out. And I'm out of the 550 win, $100,000 tournament. 
One bullet fired, $550, gone.